Frank B. Wilderson's 2005 multi-form film Reparations Now and Benjamin Wigley's 2019 spoken word short film In This World intersect through style and content to interrogate the ideology of corporate capitalist imperialism and the endurance of anti-blackness. Through the shared visual strategies of monochrome, cyclical patterns, and photographic interjections, as well as the contrasting sonic strategies of objective and subjective storytelling, these video artworks reveal their mutual, liberatory knowledges of the systemic ideologies that inform domestic and global injustice. And through the visual strategies of eye imagery and applications of eye contact, these artworks engage the viewer in this shared consciousness working to create an artist-audience network that confronts these interlocking systems of domination, both in the United States and around the world. Hi. Hello. You won't believe this. As a 23 and a half minute long video artwork, Reparations Now takes on multiple forms. It begins with Wilderson performing one side of a conversation three separate times. I'm wearing penny loafers. No socks, of course. Khaki pants from Banana Republic, Pierre Cardin shirt. But each interaction ends differently. In the first two attempts, Wilderson is interrupted by the imagined conversation participant. Am I out on parole? No, I am not out on parole. Is your stanky ass out on parole? I didn't think so. No, I did not have a receipt for the clothes. Why did I not have a receipt for the clothes? Because you don't bring receipts to the laundromat. But in the third, in which the film's colors are inverted and Wilderson's voice distorted, Wilderson ends the conversation on his own terms. I can't do this. Let's just forget it. Down here below. The film then transitions into a photographic montage, overlaid with Abby Lincoln's 1955 song, Down Here Below. In this song, Lincoln speaks to a higher power about the trials of being black on Earth. When juxtaposed with the visual succession of photographs of black families and ancestors, this song speaks to the endurance of black suffering in the U.S. from before our time to beyond it. Sometimes I'm really all at sea. You made me when the world was new. The film then transitions into another monologue by Wilderson, in which he recounts his family's history from the White Castle plantation in Louisiana to his childhood. He told me it was a plantation that had owned us when we were slaves. <laughs> Suddenly it occurred to me, what if the people who owned the White Castle Plantation in Louisiana were the same people who owned White Castle Hamburgers in Minneapolis? And I loved White Castle Hamburgers. This storytelling is broken up by interactions with three black subjects, a college academic, street spirit vendor, and a university student. The title of Wilderson's Reparations Now discloses the film's content before it even begins. This demand for reparations evokes General William Sherman's Field Order 15, which allocated 400,000 acres of confiscated Confederate land to black families after the Civil War. Some families were also to receive mules after the war, hence the phrase, 40 acres and a mule. However, President Andrew Johnson reversed this order and returned land to former slave owners who were actually given reparations for lost property. The phrase reparations now thus addresses this anti-black history as well as its endurance into the contemporary era as the U.S. government has yet to compensate the descendants of enslaved black Americans for their treatment and labor, which was valued at over $3 billion in 1860. While Reparations Now combines performance art, photographic montage, and documentary style interactions all in one, In This World maintains the same form throughout its almost four minute runtime. 
poet, Benjamin Zephaniah, who is often at the center of the video's composition at varying distances from the camera, recites a poem interspersed with facts and statistics on the state of the world over heavy electronic and atmospheric reggae-inspired beats. We live in a world where one in four people live in a state of absolute poverty. 35,000 children die each day because they are born to poor parents. The nature and consistency of the film's forms are just one difference between the two video artworks, as they were also produced 14 years apart in extremely different digital and media contexts. Reparations Now was produced in 2005, when both YouTube and Vimeo were less than a year old, but wasn't released publicly or online until 2015. In contrast, In This World was released in 2019, where almost 4.5 billion people worldwide use the internet. In This World also interrogates the saturation of digital media and communication in the contemporary global political landscape. We live in a world where they say we communicate more, but the world stayed silent when the slave trade was making money. The world stayed silent when the Nazis started to kill trade unionists. The monochrome color palettes are visual strategies immediately introduced by both video artworks. This palette produces a timeless and classic atmosphere that allows reparations now to be contextualized within any moment in American history, as black and white film served as the primary film type in American media until the mid-20th century. The sepia palette of In This World functions in a similar way to the grayscale color scheme of reparations now. When applied to a contemporary video artwork, this antique and historical connotations of sepia asserts the endurance of the video's content throughout time and across geographic borders. Furthermore, In This World features geometric shapes that rhythmically and hypnotically flash across the frame. This cyclical imagery is both similar and distinct to the stagnant yet repetitive wallpaper in the early and final minutes of Reparations Now. By placing the wallpaper at the beginning and end of the video artwork, Reparations Now presents time as cyclical and recurring, which parallels the pattern of the wallpaper itself, as well as the repetitive and predictable endurance of anti-blackness throughout American history. These visual effects are accompanied by the repetition of Wilderson's opening monologue as he begins the same story, although each with a different ending, three different times. In the same vein, the repetitive symbols and sepia palette of In This World work to interrogate the endurance of imperialism and militarism across time and geographic borders. In Reparations Now, this notion of cyclical time is furthered through the interjections of black and white photographs of Frank B. Wilderson's family. When juxtaposed with his monologues on his life and family's history, these photographs work to demonstrate how the anti-black and white supremacist ideologies that invade the lives of his ancestors endure to this day. Additionally, In This World features archival photographic interjections of revolutions throughout the video. These photographs, when juxtaposed with the cyclical visual strategies, assert the power and perseverance of revolution and radicalism across multiple historical moments of injustice and the ideological systems that informed them. Reparations Now and In This World utilize different modes of storytelling to communicate their content, but ultimately, both strategies work in their own ways to interrogate domestic and international ideologies of domination. In This World relies on objective storytelling, as Zephaniah's spoken word poem is inundated with numbers, statistics, and fact reporting. In this world, millions of women spend several hours each day collecting water. Of the 774 million illiterate adults in the world, two-thirds of them are women. This objectivity is relentless and inescapable, as these unfortunate truths saturate the entire spoken word poem and video alike. While In This World uses facts and objectivity to expose the enduring global consequences of corporate capitalist imperialism, the subjects of Reparations Now opt for subjective and autobiographical strategies of storytelling. As a theoretical tool, autobiography foregrounds the distinct knowledges and lived experiences of the film's Black participants. This subjectivity is communicated through the personal histories and thoughts of the film's Black subjects. My, my presence is a statement. My pres and it's like, who wants to associate with somebody like me? Things that they say up here to you, look at you, like they do it now. They just hate blacks. So here we are, carried our placards, 
and we're fighting against huge, gigantic political forces which span the whole country. Um, and we're at the epicenter of that. Through its prioritization of the subjective and autobiographical, Reparations Now provides narratives of black survival and perseverance that counter and deconstruct the ideologies of anti-blackness and white supremacy. The visual strategies of eye contact and direct gazes are also mutually deployed, but handled differently, by Reparations Now and In This World. Throughout his own autobiographical monologues, Wilderson shifts his head position at key moments in his narratives to stare directly into the camera. Wilderson's stories begin with his face in profile in a simple room that resembles a living room in a home. Initially, it seems that the viewer is an outsider catching a glimpse of an intimate conversation. I said to my dad, since you were there on the White Castle Plantation, do you know how we got the name Wilderson? Yet at choice moments, Wilderson confronts the viewer with his gaze, implicating them in his current conversation or story. The sparse yet consequential moments of eye contact engage the viewer in Wilderson's distinct knowledges, thus enabling and encouraging the audience to partake in the fight against anti-blackness. I name y'all Wilderson. Then my dad looked at me and he said, now you know. In This World also heavily utilizes eye contact and the symbol of the eye throughout the video artwork. Yet, in contrast to how Reparations Now selectively engages with the viewer, In This World ensures the viewer feels consistently surveyed, both physically and metaphysically. The coupling of Zephaniah's eyes staring into the camera with the drawn symbol of the eye creates multiple gazes, conclusively establishing that the viewer is being watched. When juxtaposed with the content of the spoken word poem, the eye imagery works to make the viewer feel unavoidably conscious of the global injustices Zephaniah reveals to us. This artist audience network in which Zephaniah endows us with knowledge that we carry with us after the video ends, works to decolonize our minds by raising our consciousness on the consequences and legacies of imperialism across the world. While Reparations Now and In This World contrast through form, styles of storytelling, and the context of their productions, they nevertheless intersect through the visual strategies of eye imagery, photographic interjections, monochrome palettes, and cyclical patterns to interrogate the systemic ideologies of anti-Blackness in the United States and corporate capitalist imperialism around the world. And perhaps most importantly, both videos directly engage the viewer in their liberatory knowledges. Thus, an enlightened audience carries the work done by these video artworks beyond their digital confines, creating an international and interdimensional network of radical decolonial thought. Of man-made empires. This world is designed to serve the interests of evil men. But we shall overcome. We shall overcome the greed and the short-sightedness. We shall overcome the selfishness. Because we care. And we don't fear. We care. We care. We care. But we don't fear.